Recording is on. And we are live. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of, you know what, let me just say, podcast. I am your host, Ray. With me, as always, we have Father. He's muted. I don't know if he knows. He's like... Hello? Yeah. There we go. Huh. All right. Hello. <laughs> okay. We got that happened. We got Dion. Yep, yep. We have D Wolf. Yo, what's good? No. No. And last but not least, we have Crystal. No. Hola. How's everybody doing tonight? I got a new phone. Good. Grand as always. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, shoot. All right, before we get to s- some topics, I, I want to uh throw out some stuff like like last week. Uh, do you care like the stuff that you care about or not? Um, does anybody care that Tevin Campbell just came out as a gay man? Wait, what? <laughs> that, was a, that was awesome. Okay, you know what? Uh-huh. Never, mind. never mind, never mind. That, Seven, this is why I, uh, that's what I'm saying. I was like, wait, I thought we already established. <laughs> you talking it. about something niggas knew for 30 years. What? That's like that's like the brat coming out as gay. It's like, nigga, okay. <laughs> Who didn't know? What? Who didn't know? It's been in the news cycle. And I it might, I say, yo, it must be a slow news day. It must, it must be a slow it must in other be. words. Like, <laughs> I just want to throw that out there because I thought it was funny. I was like, yo, I was like, every night, every 90s person or anybody was like, we know this already. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> also, um, in other, do you care? Um, what, what was it? Uh, do y'all care that the Breakfast Club is, or Angela Yee is leaving the Breakfast Club? Is, no. Like, really care about that? Who? <laughs> I'm sorry. Exactly. Who? Okay. That's how you know it ain't important. Was that a uh, Chris, Was that a serious who, or was you like really? Cause... I was dead ass asking who. I've never, I've never heard of this. You never heard of Angela Yee? And what again, that's how like? you know it ain't important. <laughs> <laughs> what do he look like? What color is he? Yeah. How is his hair? Is it a he or a she? I don't know. It's a it's a woman, Angela Yee. Oh, the I Breakfast think Club. Anthony he or whatever. Okay, I no, don't know. Angela. <laughs> Angela. Angela Yee. You never seen the uh, Gucci Man interview where Gucci Man like alleged that he slept with Angela Yee and then he checked it. He's like, I am not lying. <laughs> Wow. Um, let me see. Angela Yee. She's Asian? She's a mix. She's black, black and Asian. Asian. Oh, okay. Because the, the picture that they have. Okay, forget it. I, right. well, <laughs> she been on so long? Very long. I, I don't oh. know. I'm sorry. Damn, you kind of like proved my point. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you didn't even try. You just kind of proved my point. I was going to say, I don't, it's like, I hope, I was like, I really hope that, you know, when she goes out on her own, that she kind of develops a character because I don't think no one gave a fuck about her on that goddamn show. <laughs> now, I wouldn't like, exactly say that. I wouldn't say that she wasn't cared about, but she wasn't the most colorful character in the cast. I will say that. I think um, even... I, you know... Go ahead, Crystal. No, no, no. Mm-mm. You know what? I, I, would, you know, I would agree with that because the uh, only thing I can... Even though I know who she is and I knew who she was before The Breakfast Club, she she don't I don't it's just out of you know Charlemagne and Envy she don't really stand out as much and uh I know she got her own little podcast called the Lip Service and 
She don't really stand out that much on that one. That's her own damn podcast. I mean, if she's boring, just say that. Bro, it's not even that she's boring. She's just this Angela Yee. That's like the best way I can put it. She just, she's there. The you only, see her, the she's only. one of those, you see her, you say hi, then you move on. Mm-hmm. I think, think of a uh, godfather before he became the godfather when he was in the nation of domination. Like you knew who he was, but <laughs> that's a good terminology though. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's a good metaphor. Um, but the only time I remember her and I didn't even know her name was when she brought up, I think she's the one that brought up the little Kim beef beef with uh, Nicki Minaj and stuff like that. She probably did. I... Yeah, didn't Nikki check her for that? Yeah, she did. I remember because I'm I'm a yeah. boy, so I I remember who Nikki um has to check people, and Nikki's the type of person she don't check you unless it's really out of fucking hand, where it's just ridiculous at at that point. So if she's checking that girl, that woman that's on that's leaving the breakfast club then i know it's serious because i think little kim also put her on blast but i never knew her name i just saw her once in a blue moon and the only reason i was paying attention it was either either little kim addressing her or nikki addressing her or something something crazy but that was it that was only two times that i really paid attention but i didn't even know her name you know but i know now so (laughs) it was little will you remember yeah it was little kim he was okay. Yeah, Lil Kim uh, was the one that came after Angela Yee. Mm. Being messy, but I guess that's what radio is now messiness. All right. Drama sells, man. Drama sells. Radio, radio, dead. Oh my god, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Been dead for some time now. Yeah, radio, radio. Uh, <laughs> now, um, oh, excuse me. Shit. Shit. Wow, Chris. <laughs> okay, la- okay, okay, last one. Um, do y'all do care about Irv Gotti uh, exposing every uh, everything on Drink Champs about him sleeping with Ashanti and him? Uh, she made happy because you know they after they had sex and all the other shit. Do y'all care about that? Not really. The only thing that I'm going to say is Ashanti had plenty of receipts on him, too. So I don't know about that whole situation, but I'm back in Ashanti. This is the reason why I uh, got the reason why I don't like Murder Inc. (laughs) Yeah, like there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out about Irv Gotti. But, you know. That's their situation. I'm not. I'm just the outsider looking in. You know what? I don't like when Negroes want to want to do their fucking dirt and then point the finger at um at females that you know you said it was cool to to jump on you or whatever. And now years later, when shit ain't going good for you because you thought everything was good and gravy, you want to come out with this bitch mentality. Like, nigga, go somewhere with all that. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the fucking podcast, because I'm tired of these weak-ass motherfuckers. Ooh. You want to come on talking about five-year, ten-year shit that happened su- such in the past. If you want to live in the past, nigga, fine. But don't be trying to mess up people's money and reputation. So that tells me, if he's coming out with this shit now... What is Ashanti doing that's gonna come out where it makes her look like royalty? Like, what is what what is your scheme? Because you had every time to fucking do this, you come out now. Cállate la boca, llora. <laughs> She's still on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. She's still on a roll. Punk is on a roll. Punk is on a roll. Punk is on a. <laughs> And, and it's funny, all uh, right, on with the show. And it's funny you mentioned the Funkadactyls because um, I was going to talk about wrestling a little bit. Um, it's been like, what, like two, three weeks since Triple H has taken over from three. smoking that Vinny pack. <laughs> and um, I, wanted, I wanted to ask y'all because I wanted to give this time. And I don't know, I'll probably give it more time. But 
Uh, what do you think of the product so far from WWE? From what it is y'all seen? Ten times better. Holy shit! I don't know if it you is, saw Raw is. this week. Oh my god! Yo, Night and day. Kevin Owens. What? Night and day, man. Night and day. Oh my god! This is this is my dreams. I, I like <laughs> pinch me. fucking pinch me, like bro. Now WWE is doing so good right now. This week in AEW, CM Punk had to send shots. <laughs> he had to send shots. He's like, whoa, these motherfuckers are getting strong, yo. I, I we we need to uh we need to make sure that people understand, yo. This is AEW because right now WWE is fucking killing it from. The shit from the shit uh, Dexter Loomis is doing, getting tackled by security, making it look authentic <laughs> as fuck. From, you know, bro, EO Sky, Bailey, and Dakota Kai. Come on, bro. Yes. I, I, am a, I am a happy wrestling fan right now. Triple, triple. I am loving cool every game. story so far. I and am and also, I don't know if you saw, but Shawn Michaels is now vice president of talent relations. Oh, that's dope. Oh, shit. <laughs> Bro, we about to get spoiled. <laughs> that's a good oh, shit, by the way. Oh, my God, bro. I'm not, I cannot believe I'm actually fucking saying this, but I'm looking forward to SmackDown tomorrow. What the hell? Yo, both sh- and both shows have been oppressive. It's like, I'm actually excited to watch a three-hour Raw. I've been like, yo! Like, bro, because all three, I'm because to all three hours for for the first time in a long time actually have content. This is <laughs> this shit is gonna be amazing going forward. Yes, yeah. I'm glad all of y'all feel the same way I do. I've been loving the product so far. It's been very, very, very refreshing. It's. <laughs> By the way, but, Ray, uh, this is, but this is Triple H running that fade, by the way. All these changes and the product being 10 times later is Triple H running the motherfucking fade. <laughs> and bringing people back. Oh, shit. Now, now I, know, I know Sasha and Naomi may come back soon. I don't know when. Maybe at the end of that tournament. I pre- I'm predicting the tournament. But, um, and I know this is a stretch. But if they bring the Velveteen Dream back, I'm going to mark out. I don't think he's I'm coming a mark. back, Ray. I don't, I don't think he's coming back either. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's coming back either. But if he does, I'm going to He has because, He has expressed uh, that he wants to. So, yeah, I mean, anything can happen. Oh, hold on. Part the noise. Because uh, con- 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 uh, contrary to the controversy that he was going through, I actually liked him as a fucking wrestler. He, he was, he was, he was good. He was good. Yeah, he yeah was but I mean, we got a, uh, we got Quincy Elliott, right? Who? <laughs> Quincy <laughs> Elliott, the super diva. He's coming on NXT. You ain't see the vignette. Uh, oh god. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give it a chance. I would give. It, I'm not gonna knock that. I would give. It. If I gave No Way Jose a chance. I, just, I still, bro, to this day, I still side eye you for that shit. Like, no way. I like, I like the gimmick. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like it. A, a nigga just comes out and just big ass Dominican. Dominican. That's that's all he is. Is a big ass Dominican. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll be the first to tell you the gimmick is dumb as fuck, but I like it. <laughs> You can side you can side on me all you want to. I nah, fuck man. with the gimmick. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I mean shit. Do you? Do you? I ain't. <laughs> they have been worse than no way, Jose. <laughs> yeah, actual roles. It's like <laughs> Oh, that was a big uh, one. Uh, uh. Uh, what's, what was it? They called him the freak. That was the word. The Lars, the uh, what's his name? Lars Sullivan. Oh, my. <laughs> what, you don't like big, generic, big, bearded, bald, white guy? No. <laughs> no. 
I didn't like the fact that they was trying to like uh, portray him as this big ass behemoth, and everybody he wrestled was bigger than him. Yeah, because I'm bigger than them. That's them, I guess, trying to show off how strong he is or whatever. <laughs> what are you yelling about? <laughs> oh man, that that one was just dead. Ain't nobody <laughs> liked him. I ain't never seen someone so dead on arrival more than Lars Sullivan. That that shit. Yeah, was... that is very true. He was, <laughs> he was not. Nobody liked him. Oh shit! Mm. And he was racist, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, and he did gay prawn, and he did gay prawn. <laughs> so, there was wow. Yeah, there was a lot wrong with that dude. Any last words before we move on to our next topic? Man, this Vinny pack is delicious. That's all. I'm I'm still smoking Vinny pack. I remember watching that live, Crystal. I was with Hulk Hogan arguing with an old woman. Mm-hmm. Why are you laughing at me? Let's go do that. Also, this is a lesson. Pass it down. Get your old ass out the motherfucking paint and pass it down. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, on to more political news. Um, uh, this one is going to be about uh, Joe Biden signing the Inflation Reduction Act or try to uh, into law Tuesday after it passed in Congress late last week. This new law is trimmed down version of the president's 1.75 trillion build back better plan. Um, the law will allocate 369 billion towards climate and energy policies, extend the Affordable Care Act to reduce the cost of health insurance, and incorporate a 15% minimum corporate tax for your companies that earn more than one billion per year. Um, if you are struggling with admin, admin today's economy, you should consider using a personal loan to help you down that. Oh, shit. Um, basically, I guess uh, Joe Biden's trying to do something about the inflation. Do y'all think there's a inflation reduction that is going to do anything about it, or do you think it's still we still going to have problems? As long Sounds as like a wait and see. All I'm saying, as long as America is doing what it's doing currently, we're always going to have issues because we are in a debt-based society. It's literally that simple. In a debt-based society, you borrow money in order to, you know, do what you need to do in the uh, in the event that you're going to pay it back. That's that's how the, that's how most people make money in America. So. Because it is debt-based, because we live in a capitalistic society that likes to cannibalize off of each other, there's always going to be issues. Now, if you take some of that, uh, what's it called? If you take some of that uh, infrastructure, if you take some of that money and you actually invest it into incentives that, you know, provide a safety net for people, then it won't be as bad. But I don't know what we're going to see. Now, we're just going to wait and see because anything can happen. You know, this could be beneficial to a lot of people or this could be just putting a rug on the same issues that we've been doing for years and years and years. So we will see. Just cause a problem and come up with the solution later, knowing you caused the problem in the first place. And then you don't <laughs> want to admit that you fucking saw me. put the problem there in the first place. Yeah. That's my this is all a game. I don't. I have, I'm done with that. Whatever that thing is, I'm done with them. <laughs> uh. The math ain't mathing with you. Uh. <laughs> no, we're in this situation. Well, we're in a worse situation because of this fool. So now he wants to come up with a solution to save face and make the Dems look. Um, Good again, because again their ass is kicked in the prime. All right, that's I'm done. These people, yo, this is, yo, you guys are just talking about wrestling. I swear, this is what's going on in the political front. It's just wrestling. They're writing this shit. Uh, 
with the fucking oh, jobs. Oh man, uh, I'm 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 with father. I I guess I gotta wait and see. Um, I don't I I don't I don't lost my ability to trust Biden. I guess that's something to say, or you know, to give him the leeway. I know it's been like two years out of his four, and but uh, I don't know. I you know, shit is shit has not really gotten better <laughs> with uh, him him in office or some shit like that. And I feel like that was the one and only job he had to show people he was better than Trump. And now people is like, shit, we might as well stuck with Trump. So if this plan does work, I hope it does in his favor because, you know, inflation, it, like, you know, you start buying shit, inflation is really, really, really kicking people's ass, especially in food. Like, I went to shit, I went to McDonald's and McDonald's Big Mac, it's like 10 bucks. <laughs> Really right. Dog, a whole, a whole Big Mac meal is like ten bucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's well, it used to be like half of that. Yo. Yeah, what? Twenty years ago, bro. Twenty years, bro. Let me tell you, twenty five years ago, if you went to McDonald's with five dollars, you were balling. Thanks. You could feed the whole squad with five dollars. Twenty five years. Ago. Right. I've done it. <laughs> I was about to say, my my mom used to like buy do, uh that's when Big Macs were like a dollar or some shit like that. And like she used to give like we used to have like two Big Macs on uh a person or some shit like that to feed the whole damn family and shit. Now shit. I don't know. I don't even like ordering from DoorDash because they be having them extra fees and shit. And a fucking five dollar meal costs like thirty four dollars just to deliver it to your house. Yeah, it's so, like I don't yeah, want to pay thirty one. Bro, if you if you if you get like what, what so if you get like food that's like seven eight dollars, that you about to pay almost nineteen twenty dollars for the delivery plus tip. So, and then on top of that. The right those those applications don't make a lot of don't make a lot of money anyway. They're actually losing money, from what I've read. I heard they I heard they bought the fire people of Uber because <laughs> <laughs> of this inflation shit. I I did not know that shit affected people like that. I was like I knew it affected people, but when they started letting people go, I was like, shit. <laughs> it's it's. It's, it's fucking rough out I here. I think the man. saddest part, and uh, I think, D-Wolf, you're going to agree with me with this. I think the saddest part is that even when you talk about inf- uh, inflation, and even if you explain what inflation is, there are so many people that's still going to give you the dumb nigga look. <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, what? what? Well, I- all I know is my money don't work no more. Like, <laughs> my, boss, my boss had to explain this to a customer because she thought she should get more Porsches because you know she's paying more, and he was like, "That's not how it works, sweetie." And <laughs> Keep printing money, raising that debt ceiling. Um, yeah, f- fiat currency be like, <laughs> yeah. All right. So with the inflation reduction or whatever they think that they can reduct, because each company in America, um, no one can tell a farmer what to 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 put the price of. If gas is going up, what are you gonna do? Reduce the gas or stop the gas you're sending to Ukraine? Like, which one do you wanna fucking do first? Because at the end of the day, you can reduce the inflation all you think you can, but companies operate at their own accord. If you have a farmer that cannot get the gas needed to travel and to farm the land, what the fuck do you think is going to happen if he never dealt with the gas situation and sent stuff and, and, and fucked up that relationship, we would not be looking at inflation now. Most of the farmers, the reason why they're even raising prices is because it's a lot of money to maintain a farm. What does a farm require? It requires food for the animals. How does the animals get the food? through delivery. 
through utilizing gas. So as much as people know that the food prices are going up, who is our person that we go to to get the food? The farmers. The farmers at the end of the day. And what makes it worse is the fact that no one used to take this serious until you have a piece of meat, two pieces of meat for $20 and up. A lot of people who even have uh, EBT is going to dollar stores for food. The people who are middle class and up, they're not even feeling the inflation. The inflation reduction is basically to shut people up that make less than $50,000 so that they don't complain too much. It takes time for this reduction to happen. It takes time. And not everyone is going to be on the wagon of this bill and say, yeah, I get it. We can only raise it for a certain amount of dollars. But what about those private companies that sell to private grocery stores? That means they're going to get the best that the farmers have to produce because they're going to get more money. So that means you're going to feed the scraps to people for what it's worth because people do not give anything for nothing. And then in the communities that make 50 grand and up, they're going to get the best and the larger portions. At the end of the day, we are looking at hunger games and this is not a game mm -hmm. that you want to be on the losing end with. At the end of the day, he's talking about, oh, what the energy and stuff like that. Right now, we are seeing an energy crisis. Energy. They are cutting out diesels. No, trucks soon won't have diesel, access to diesel in certain states. This is a war on people who are self-employed that is not making more than 50 grand. Yeah. Speaking it, of energy, oh, sorry, go ahead. I thought you were done. Go ahead. Right now, we've seen the electromagnetic pulses that is weakening the electricity infrastructure that we have right now. Conspiracy theory? I think not. We've seen shortages and outages out of fucking nowhere. How come? What we're doing is fucking up the economy on so many fucking levels that it's making things worse. But if you are on the losing end, you're going to feel it more so than anyone else that is making 50 grand and up. And it's sad that he's utilizing this bill basically to shut people up, basically to look like he's doing something. Let me tell you something. Inflation is always going to be there. It's always going to be there. How much is it going to be reduced? And is it going to be uh, fast enough for people not to lose their homes, not to lose their jobs, not to lose their fucking mind? No. By the time this bill comes in order, because everything is a process, by the time this bill comes in order, a lot of people are going to see hell. All I'm saying is if you do not have a plan right now, if you are not stocking up and, and putting your money together to get your own farmland and do what the fuck you need to do, you're going to be in trouble. Hmm. Where are we... Sorry, go ahead. No, that's all. Yeah, where are we at the cusp of, cusp of being um, energy independent? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And then this fool comes into office and ends the fucking fracking and uh, and close down those pipelines and shit like that. Then fucks Russia to a point where the gas goes up. And now you're going to produce this bill where you could just undo what you did and get those people their jobs back and get us our gas back. And then when we are able to handle our money, we could focus on your green energy because we're not struggling and it's not keeping us from attaining that. We have to keep writing bills, writing bills, writing bills, writing bills. And it gets argued and nothing gets done. In the meantime, let's stop with this bullshit of, okay, okay, you're going to end what Trump did, blah, 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 blah. But look where the economy was before you came in. And everything you've done and signed has led to this shit. I, I mean, it's you don't need to be a genius to be like, you know what? Mm, let me kind of put this back at this back. End of the no. So you're going to let people like, 
go crazy and kill themselves and all this shit, lose their jobs, all this. And and later on, you're like, oh, I got a bill for this. That may work for you, may not. You probably have clauses in there and shit like that when you could just fix this. This, this is retarded. That's what I'm saying. Like, what is ha- Can people just, yo, all right. And people want to wonder why there's a red wave. Okay. Now it's going to be all Republican, and that's going to be a problem. Thank you, dumbasses. Because remember, um, same bird, different wings, you know, left and right. So, like, you can't have too much of the extreme. And now this is what it's going to lead to, because nobody trusts any of y'all. And some of y'all might even have good intentions. I actually read the the voting books and i see who's there and i see Demo- democrats who are making sense i'm like yeah well, i vote for them that's why i don't care but this is where they are and this is what it's leading to now people are just gonna vote red just to just to end all these motherfuckers now look where we are but yeah sign a bill so people could just shoot it down because they find something that they know people won't agree with and this that, and the other like that's gonna work this is just gonna delay shit and things are just gonna get worse in the meantime so It's crazy. Whoa, did I get cut off? Nah, you didn't. Oh, okay. I'm like, wow. Think, yeah, Ray was still <laughs> muted for some reason. Any, oh, okay. last, any last words before we move on to our next topic? Uh, that Biden that Biden pack is coming soon. I'm waiting. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> we we smoking Vinny. We about to smoke Biden. Mm-hmm. Kamala soon too. I want that Kamala too. Mm-hmm. I want them all. Nah, that that one's exclusive. You can't even find them. <laughs> <laughs> exclusive, bro. That's, that's super exclusive. You gotta you gotta look for that. <laughs> oh man. Um, I know last week we kind of touched on uh, the fucking raid of Donald Trump. Uh, I guess they're releasing more documents from the Mar-a-Lago search. Uh, Judge, uh, um, according to CNN Politics, uh, Judge Reinhardt said during the hearing that at the West Palm Beach courthouse that he was planning to unseal portions of the affidavit which was sought by various media outlets and other organizations. His announcement came after the judgment justice department, excuse me, while arguing against the disclosure of the documents revealed new, if not extremely vague details about the investigation into handling of classified documents from the Trump white house. Uh, Reinhardt said in motion on Thursday, the possible public release of a heavily redacted version of the affidavit, for the search at the Mar-a-Lago, does plans to hear more from the Justice Department by next Thursday about how extensively investigators want to keep confidential documents that describe their investig- investigative steps and methods leading to the search. So basically, they uh, we might hear more things about what they found in the raid. Are y'all interested in that? I am. <laughs> <laughs> This is gonna be fun. Cause these dumb I was here are, I was yeah. hearing some shit like uh <laughs> they might have like Trump was having some nuclear secrets and then some type of laptop or some shit like that. That's from what I've heard. I don't I don't buy it because that's some why would you have like extremely classified mm-hmm. information in a fucking house where mm-hmm. people can rage and shit? Mm-hmm. But uh and, and- <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Evo. And uh, this guy, yo, he's playing them like a fiddle. They have no idea. You see what the FBI is doing? We are, I, well, me personally, since learning history, have a problem with the FBI. Okay. Like, I don't trust these motherfuckers. Look at what they've done to all of our black leaders. Like, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. 
These people are panicking. These people took, what did they take? His passports? And you're not allowed to do that? And they took his passport. Knowing damn well they're not supposed to do that, but they took his passports because they're panicking and grabbing everything. And that's not wasn't on the list of what you're supposed to take. Why'd you take that? And then um, the news was like, oh, Trump is going so crazy. He's saying that uh, the FBI took his passports. Uh, that wasn't on the list. Of course they didn't take it. What, five minutes later, the FBI comes out saying, oh, yeah, we weren't supposed to take that, blah, blah, blah. So, and I'm like, yo. So I'm like, okay, are you set? I know because I know he has things. Yo, oh, my God. I can't go that deep on this, yo. But I'm like, this dude is a... Uh, He's a chess master. He's a chess cha uh, champion. Um, he's playing with them. He's thought so many steps ahead. And I'm like, okay, because why do you think, like, really and truly, I understand how silly it is and all this stuff, but when you think about words, you got to focus on what these people say. Like, you really do. Like, he says winning all the time. He's saying it matter-of-factly because, he, yo, he knows his plan. He knows what he's got to do. All he has to do is say one thing or move a certain way or do one thing. He knows that the media and everybody, these crazy people on the left are just going to jump on it and da da da, da. And, You know? Because, like, really and truly, they make this point. They're like, okay, what if what if it was um, Don Jr. that was uh, doing all this shit uh, Hunter's doing? Like, you, come on. You know they would have treated the way they're treating this dude right now. You know they're like, you know? People will be like, see, so imagine him. Uh, you know, we know what he's about. Remember, he was in Hollywood, blah, 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 right? right? He knows all these. Uh, so at the same time, so imagine if that happened at the same time, you're going to use the same thing that we keep saying against him about these celebrities and what they're up to. That's what it'll take. You know, imagine that because I can, I can see it leading there because you see how I can see it leading there. He's seen more than that. That's why he used the words winning. He kept saying it. And I'm like, but at the same time, every time they try to trip him up on something, he's, he's out of it. I'm like, yo, what? I'm seeing this. And I'm like, yo, and you see seeing like, and when you live in your life and you're seeing people around you just go crazy, just like that out of nowhere. But you know, yesterday you were saying this shit and they were all about it. They even brought some of that shit to you. But now you're and all that shit. Yo, I, this is predictable at this point. You know, like the people try to like people try to troll me and argue with me. And I'm like, yo, I can watch this argument go. I will be like, I'll give my response, this, that and the other. And I'll predict in every response what you're going to say. I'll type it out and y'all actually do it. I will be like, OK, um, watch this person now insult me. The next two responses, there's an insult. I didn't say anything, you know. I just said my what I know and this and the other and rebuted what he said, and, but they, they went there, you know? And then it just goes further from there, and I just watch it, and I, you know, and I just point it out, and I, I actually make videos about that because I'm like, look what's happening, you know? So, no, back to Trump. Imagine what, this is going on. I could read these people, and he's... he's so I'm like, I, I got this, yo. Chess champion. So I'm like, so when he, sing, when he says certain things and he, and he sounds fucking retarded, I'm like, you're fucking joking, right? Because I know you wouldn't say that. And, you know, you're not, come on, you're the president. People paying attention. What are you doing? But he will do it. And people will go crazy. And, some, and the thing is, when he will do this, it will be things regular people do. Regular people say. And no, and for a fact that if the last president said the same thing, same tone, same word, same meaning, it will have a, a different reaction. So this is all a game. I want to see this. Go hard. Go hard. You know, you're revealing your hands. You're showing. You're proving to us, to everybody that's been saying against these, this, or, this um, agency about what you've been doing, especially to black people. Right? Because don't forget, they were against him from the start. They're against the orange man from the start. Why? And why aren't, weren't you bothering the ones before? Especially Bush, right? Because we were all on the same page about that motherfucker. So why you leave him alone? 
And everybody you left alone has fucked the shit up in some way or the other. Whereas this one is fixed shit. And I understand people don't like him in this and the other. But you can't admit, like, people can't at least admit. It's right there. Come on. Come on. Let's. Okay. Okay. I, I get it. I don't like him. I, I get it. But look what's happening. Shit's working. And people are going crazy. Come on, guys. You know? So this is going to be fun. That's all I got to say. And these people are going crazy. Say, <laughs> uh, you, I think right now what we're seeing is a manipulation of not only just information, but a, but a manipulation of perception. Because, again, you only see what they want you to see and everything else is still out there. You know what I mean? Like it's they can't hide every single thing. So for someone to believe what is being said, it's because they're purposefully being shown that. That's all I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. It's, yo, sometimes all it takes is is um someone you look up to to repeat what like the Democrats are saying, and just drop all what they believe before and just run with that. And this happened to a lot of people. Because when you start making fun of that so-called celebrity, um, they jump on you. I'm like, you don't even know what? You've criticized people I like, things I like all the time, and I wouldn't cool with it. I've done the same thing. You'd be like, oh, you, you, be, you repeat like, oh, you don't know what you're missing and this and the other. You just drop it. We move on. You're going to attack me. and it, Yo. <laughs> so sometimes it's all it takes. And, that, and it's working. That's the thing. It's working. Because I'm sure everybody's seen people just switch up, like ideas and morals and stuff. I'm like, you weren't like that yesterday. Why are you believing this shit? You don't know them. And these are coming from white people on the TV. So no matter who's talking, and especially with the way we are, this certain energy where we know these people are suppressors and this and the other rich people, this that they're in power, blah, 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 what they've done to us for history. And we're here wondering which side is right. It's like, yo, no, wh- what? Let's fuck. Let them fight each other on TV, whatever. But us right here, like, okay, if you're going to roll with this, I don't care what number, letter, whatever you color you represent, yo. If whatever you're saying that you're going to do and I agree with it, then I'll vote for you. Okay. The moment you stop, we're going to say what we got to say. We're going to reach for impeachment if shit goes to that far. We're going to check you. People got to come together. It's, it's easy for people to just come together and just check anybody. Even if you voted for them, you could be like, oh, nah, I didn't say you could do that. Imagine that type of life. But they make sure that we won't get there by splitting us up, paying this person, this, that, and the other. Yo, I'm about the people here. Stop. The people. We the uh, people. <laughs> uh, any uh, anybody else got any uh, words to say before we move on to our next topic? Nope. Okay. So I got I got a question. I got a question for y'all. Do y'all identify as black? Nah, I can't. Do you identify, identify as black? <laughs> No, it's a serious question because you might not identify. Father, you got me to say it again. I said I don't think I'm Do allowed identify to identify as black, as black anymore. No, it's a serious question because you might not identify. Can you please Is it because of Twitter? Thank you. Okay. Uh, when I walked into a room, I am not done. I'll be seeing some oh, stuff oh, you go oh, through. Hey, y'all Other than the well, shit you I'm just asking you to yo, listen to me. Yo, and I, and I'm question. about to answer okay. the first True. question. But I didn't but, um, finish my question. I, I saw this video. And yeah, I'm black. <laughs> I thought this was hilarious. Less than 9% because, um, of the people in this room this, uh, are black. Obviously, and we're all not this here is a for video you. of a woman she's about to ask. Do you okay. think there are racial inequalities and, uh, in America? And how do you feel about Trump increasing both economic inequality and, and discrimination for people, people, people of color and LGBTQ people? And LGBTQ so, people. I'm, we're not going to watch the whole thing. So. Do you identify as black? No, it's a serious question because you might not identify. Can you please put the mic? Thank you.
Mom. Do you identify as black? No, it's a serious question, because you might not identify. Can you please put the mic? Thank you. Okay. Uh, when I Less walked into, when I walked into the question. room, I am I not done with my question. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, young lady. Well, young lady. I, I'm just asking you to listen to me while and, and I'm And I'm about question. to answer okay. the first question. But I didn't, I didn't finish my question. Okay. Yeah, I'm black. Less than 9% of the people in this room are black. And we're all not here for you. Do okay. you think there are racial inequalities in America? And how do you feel about Trump increasing both economic inequality and discrimination for people, people of color and LGBTQ people? What about violence against marginalized people in the United States? Can you talk about that? Well, the, the subject was about you know, national security and foreign policy. But I will tell you that uh, I think in the minority community, in the black community, I think they're pretty happy that unemployment isn't at an all-time low in the United States of America for Hispanic and black communities. And, and that's the truth. As a matter of fact, overall unemployment is an all-time low. So if you want to break the, uh, the pay gap or racial inequality gap, the most important thing is my parents taught me, who were black, born and raised down south, was about equality of opportunity and not equality of outcomes. I would challenge you to read the book by a black man by the name of Booker T. Washington called Up From Slavery. Okay? That's funny. Because W.E.B. E. Du Bois is much better at uh, describing the racial inequalities in America well, well, that you are denying that happen now. And to say that, like, we are better and unemployment is down is dismissing the fact that a lot of LGBTQ people are in trouble right now because of your administration. And a lot oh, of black I'm not people, in the administration. I'm just a guy. I mean, here. you are you are supporting <laughs> I mean, the administration, though, aren't you? I'm not speaking for the administration. Oh, I mean, okay. Unless Sorry, you were, I didn't know that. I, yeah, you I'm just a private a citizen. I'm just Joe Sixpack. Okay, I have a second question. Uh, 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 there's more to it. It's like a whole five minute video, but uh, yo, um, shoot. after let watching me, that, what did y'all think about? <laughs> Let me that, get at him. Let me let me get at him. Let me let me get at her for a second. So go ahead. I go am ahead, go ahead. I am personally tired of the people that think that they are doing so much good work going up to these politicians or running up on like a public forum with a politician and doing that stupid ass bleeding heart liberal shit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you don't care about gay people. You don't care about black people, even though you're black. And it's just like, bro. You can see people's actions. Like, people's actions will tell you everything you need to know. You don't have to go on this motherfucking Batman tirade about how these motherfuckers aren't doing this and how these motherfuckers aren't doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, she. it sounds like she was there to, like, it sounds like she was there as, like, a hired assassin type shit. Like, oh, uh, she was only really there to, like, press him. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't really there to have a discussion. She wasn't really there to, you know, find out what information would be viable for her to, you know, be an asset to her communities. She just wants to scream about the problem every single motherfucking day. Black people ain't got this. LGBT people ain't got that. What are you going to do about it? No, sister. What are you going to do about it? You know what the problem is. That's why you're over there in that forum yelling at this man. So what are you going to do to be part of the solution that you are talking about? If you don't have an allocation of resources, there's people you can reach out to to provide those allocations. If you think that there is inequality in the justice system, if you think that there's inequality in general, there are many um, organizations that are created to combat those things. What organization are you part of? How much money have you invested into becoming part of the solution? You know what I'm saying? Like we at some point, self accountability has to be at play here because I am so tired. And, you know, like they like to frame these videos as SJWs getting owned and liberals being owned and feminists being owned and shit like that. I understand what these people are trying to say because there are issues in this country, but Honestly, a lot of that whole liberal shit is just motherfuckers being loud about the problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, then the motherfuckers that go out on a protest talking about, uh, you know, oh, we, we demand justice and we do this and we do that. And you look at their track record, you ain't got shit to show for it. You set it up. Um. Ah. <sighs> 
All right, watching that was painful. The reason why it was painful, it was because a woman who I'm sure does not identify as black was asking someone else if they identify as black. And if you know what black truly is, it's a diverse group of people. To identify anyone as black is very demeaning to a versatile uh, <laughs> culture, to a diverse group of people so when she starts off with that question and wants to add on more questions and won't even let him speak to answer the first question with a lot of attitude she is not in any position to ask a man with a whole fucking degree um questions of that nature the reason why is because it's her attitude. If you are willing to hear someone out, all that fucking attitude needs and that bass in your voice when you're a whole female needs to come out of your fucking voice. If you're really listen, trying to listen to people speak, I don't understand where the animosity came from. Even Malcolm X had more class than that. I mean, for God's sake, he... <laughs> I won't go into him. But, um... That's not how you do things. Um, I identify as West Indian, okay? Um, because it's a whole string of what black is, okay? And, and, and just having it is so mediocre. But anyway, moving on. Um, when he answered the question, what I did not like is an, instead of her addressing the main issue, which I have yet to to understand what is she trying to get at. She was trying to pull Trump at one point, and then when the Trump question didn't work, then she pulled in the LGBT community, like they're so victimized. They're in trouble because of your administration. Okay, bitch, then go to the administration, and why is it only you if they're so much in trouble? Are you the representative of the LGBT community? Like, sit your ass down and read the book that he was telling you to read. Look at things from a 360 view, obviously from the way that she couldn't even say words and she was talking to the person holding the mic like she was uh, a prima donna. Get the fuck out. Who let her in to that establishment is where I want to. I feel like a lot of people who feel entitled to talk about black anything is the ones that make things look really bad for the black community. Um from a level of people who are narrow-minded. They would utilize her as a save-all person to be part of anyone that's that actually was backing the BLM community. She's the one that uh, actually would incite a fucking uh, riot that's unnecessary and people would fucking die. This is the mentality that I don't give a fuck how I sound, but this is the type of mentality as why Hitler was born in the fucking first place. That kind of mentality of not looking at things at a 360 view and want to look like you want to attack someone instead of hearing them out in a calm manner like you have fucking common sense. This is why we have things like riots. This is why we have people who want to cancel you know, things that don't have anything to do with it. It has nothing to do with you, lady. Do you identify as black? Do you identify as Hispanic? Deal with your own cultural fuckery and leave the LGBT community out of your fuckery. Leave the black community out of your fuckery. Do not come at our people like that. That's fucked up. Because right now, Dominicans really think they don't even identify as black. Deal with that. Don't deal with shit you don't even know about when, when shit doesn't get um, your way. He answered the fucking question, and instead of you addressing what he just told you, you went on to the next topic. At the end of the day, you sound like a little girl. At the end of the day, if you really gave a fuck about black people, you wouldn't be there trying to argue a man down. You're like, you got balls. Dead ass, you had no feminine energy and the way that you was talking to him was very disrespectful. And if he was really for the black community, you wouldn't talk to him like he's a little fucking boy. You're not fooling anybody. You're not fooling a damn person. If you're really for the black community, I'm sure you have yet, 
you have yet to get your hands dirty in the black community. So for anyone that loves to come to the aid because the black community needs you and the LGBT, whatever, <laughs> show your credentials of fucking helping and doing something that really makes a fucking difference before you come trying to use black people as your token because your life is fucking pathetic. Stop it. Yo, <laughs> damn. She was mad before she that even stepped good. through those doors. <laughs> that I, don't, I don't know what she cooking, but that tasted delicious. <laughs> yep. These fucking steaks are delicious. These mashed potatoes are delicious. I love it. Ten out of ten. Yo. Oh. Shit. And you, know, and you know what? <laughs> we'll go to Red to say fucking delicious. <laughs> Finally, <it's real> fucking. <laughs> Yo. And uh, speaking of, you say something. Yeah, speaking of 360 view, Crystal, like I'm glad she pointed out um, who was in the room and the lack of black people in the room because I was like, just to the point I was making earlier, I'm like, yeah, because 360 view, you're going to get everything you can to find out if this person speaking in my town is worth listening to at all by based on what he's saying now, if I should take a chance with him and let me compare it to the other person I, I you know, Basically wanted to win. Let me get the information. Maybe not even to see if that person will be, but let me see what he's saying myself just to prove him fucking wrong. They don't even do that. They she, That girl walked in there mad already before she went through those doors. She hated him just because of the R. Don't know his story. Don't know none of that. He's black and Chris was saying that Dominicans don't even want to admit that they're black or claim to be black. Why don't you focus on that? Clearly, he's black. Um. Okay, he admits it. Okay, but you still want to focus on him? The hell is going on? Yeah, I want to focus on him. He's not doing shit for LGBTQ, man. Come on. <laughs> I thought it was about black people. Yeah, everybody's doing black. everything for the LGBTQ. Black. So what are they saying? <laughs> They're not doing nothing for the LGBTQ, and the LGBTQ is oppressed. Okay, we oppress. We 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 oppress, man. Yeah, that's uh, all I know. It I took over comics. Yeah, what you mean? <laughs> Y'all getting away with a lot. I, I, I'm sorry. Are you black? Are you even black? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's I don't know. Like, even when I was saying it, it sounds ridiculous. Like, why the fuck is that the first question? Like, mm -hmm. that's like somebody coming up to me. He's like, are you black? I'm like, uh, well, gee. Hmm. Yo, he I just love his face where she's like, do you identify as black? <laughs> he, he just looked at us like, this what? <laughs> he's like, he's like, like nigga. Are you and black? I, love I am black. That's what he said. I am black, but it's yo, like... I, I, I just remember something. Remember he brought up um, Booker T. Washington, and yeah, then she yeah. brought up W. E. B. Du Bois, and I was du like, Bois. "Isn't that something? Look at which which one studies who, and you wonder why this one came out crazy like this, and this one's a calm demeanor and trying to get things out. like yo." Because I heard about, I, like, I, oh my God. Bro, mm. Ray, you remember mm. me saying this. Them, bro, this is what they do, bro. They, because, like, those type of people, they make themselves look dumb. Okay. And they provide material for the conservatives, for those Republicans. They're yeah. not, mm -hmm. like, bro, we already know that, you know, Republicans and conservatives, they, they have, they, they say and do dumb shit. But if they're the ones yeah. that are actually catching you, you know, on this motherfucking tirade trying to, you know, G-check them and shit like that. You are the one looking <laughs> fucking stupid. Yeah. You are the one looking fucking stupid. And th that's why, like, that whole cancel culture thing, that's why that's all they got. You know mm. what I'm saying? Oh, what are you gonna do about it? We're gonna cancel you. Like, nigga, the fuck is that gonna do? You know what? I would love to see. And this is why, this is what angers me with people who really do not know the history of black people, but they use it as a token to see to seem like they stand up for something and they're really, you know, upstanding citizens. Okay. This is why I call bullshit. It's funny. Any other 
um, politician or someone who's doing what he did, um, they're, they can be of another ethnic group. Do you ever see anyone say when something goes wrong and it happens to be a large, uh, versatile group of people, like um, say for instance, Asians, when you see an Asian person up there speaking, do you see anyone in the crowd saying, oh, do you identify as Asian? Well, why are you not doing this for the community? No one Asian has to carry a whole fucking uh, cultural of people that's of their um, standard of what they identify as Asian, being Asian. They don't have to worry about um, being uh, penalized or stereotyped if something does not happen with someone that looks like them or acts like them or come from their ethnic background. Sister, of course she's going to hate with the fuck Recording is on. <laughs> Mm -hmm. She's like, what you say? Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> we own it. <laughs> no, it's, it's just pay attention. I pay attention. It's always black people in politics that have to carry a whole culture and ethnic group on their on their shoulders. But any other race, you don't see motherfuckers like her. Do you identify as Oriental? Do you identify as Caucasian? Do you I fuck get the fuck out of here? Like seriously. You don't vote for me, you ain't black. Mm -mm. And then you you, you want to know what would have been a better intro to that? Hello, I run an organization called this. We deal with this, 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 and this. And for the for the, uh, the last year, you know, we've had to deal with these difficulties. We've seen this dis discrepancies within our people, and you know, we've seen these specific issues about our people. So. If you want to collaborate on these issues so that we can find a solution that could benefit everybody, you know, here's my information. Maybe we can exchange some things. Maybe we can have meetings. So, you know, we can dialogue and brainstorm some ideas about how to bridge the gap and, you know, make the world a better place for these particular people. I just mm. solved the problem in mm -hmm. fucking 15 seconds. Right. If he just would have started with that, I fucking promise you he would have, he would have called her for any motherfucking discussion that she wanted to have. That's and it was recorded. And Bro, it was recorded. It was recorded. Mm -hmm. She made herself look dumb. Like, what are you doing? So asking this man if he identifies as black when we all can see this is certainly a black person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he has a political party and you know there's a lot of people that's going to have different opinions about that. But at the end of the day, if you have something that you want to say, there is a proper way to do it. You coming to the mic and yelling at the mic isn't the way to do it. That's why your ass is not being taken seriously. And that's why they keep making videos about shit like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not the only video like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen enough. <laughs> bro, there's so, yeah, dude, there's so many of them. SJW getting destroyed, mm -hmm. feminists getting destroyed, compilation. Like, this is what they do because y'all are legitimately out here looking stupid. Ain't yeah. nobody trying to hear about fucking uh, story time with the transgenders. I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> not like that. That's not what people want to see, bro. What people want to see is solutions to problems. That's it. If you're part of the solution, then be part of the fucking solution. But they rather cause more problems. <laughs> yeah, they'd rather just yell about the problems 24-7 about some shit that we already... Did you know that the LGBTQ, like, yeah, nigga, the other 50,000 feminists said that shit. Mm -hmm. We know. <laughs> we know. But now, now they're losing out because of LGBT, the swimming and all that stuff, like, the sports, they're losing out. Now they're at war. God, man! All I know is there are people that solve their problems. They take initiative to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. They don't go up to motherfuckers talking about, "Are you black?" Shut the fuck up. Maybe, maybe, maybe none of us should fucking identify as black. Maybe that'll solve the problem. Forehead. Yeah. <laughs> and Tifa confused a lot of motherfuckers, including Antifa. <laughs> uh, Lord, I I hope in my old age, I hope no one ever comes up to me and says, like, "Do you identify as black?" It's just, uh, Yo, if somebody if somebody asks me that shit, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, you know what I identify as? 
I identify as a big ass bowl of gumbo. I'm delicious. <laughs> oh my god. Uh any last words before I pull the final topic? I just want to say from now on, again, I identify as free. That's all. Free man. I identify as David Ruffin of the Temptations. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. That's cheating. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, my pro- I tell people all the time my pronouns are king or that nigga. So yeah, <laughs> you can say either. One. My pronouns uh, is I'm uh, hungry. <laughs> it was it was Diddy. It was Diddy having a uh, conversation with Tim and He was basically talking about R and B is dead, but it was just oh. like. The video, yo! I swear to God, the video literally disappeared. I, I, this is not even Jesse. This is YouTube. But, uh, yeah, um, shit. He was because he was making some good points in there, and I may, I may not be a fucking Diddy supporter all the time, but this one, I thought he was on point, and. Yeah, uh, I got. I got to look for the video. Um, have y'all? Was if any of y'all ever heard him talk about that? Yeah, I saw the discussion of it on uh, Twitter. Uh, what you think about it? As I try to find the goddamn video. So I think Diddy kind of has a point. Well, because I'm assuming that when he's saying R and B is dead, I'm assuming like. He's saying that because a lot of these artists, they're not really making R&B songs. You know what I'm saying? And I think you agree with me when I say that, Ray, because a lot of the art, like, quote unquote, R&B artists that are out here, they're more they're more so like. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're more so fusion artists, you know, like it's not it's like. The, their R&B basically comes from the subject matter. Like they're talking about love. They're talking about a nigga being ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? But like. R&B back in the day was about ro- romance. You know what I'm saying? It was about mm-hmm. romance, plain and simple. So, bro, we, like you had the Isley Brothers. You know what I'm saying? You had um, Teddy Pendergrass. Like you had a lot of you had a lot of people back in the day. They just sung about romance, or they sung about how romance hurts. They like you know they talk about like a whole bunch of variety of shit. That but now all of a heart, sudden, yeah. yeah. But now all of a sudden. The, you, you hear about R and B? I be so sad, can you niggas? Y'all contradict that, like, bro. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> fuck. Okay, for, so first of all, shout out to SZA because I fucking love that song. Either way, you know what I'm saying. I think it's a great song, but I'm just saying the essence of R and B isn't as strong as it was back then. You know what I'm saying? Like even in the '90s, you had Mary J. Blige, you had Z- you had uh, Zane, you had uh, Whitney Houston, bro. You had Mariah Carey. You had people that could fucking blow. You know what I'm saying? Like, they get on a microphone, that shit's catching on fire. Because these motherfuckers can sing they fucking asses off, right? Who in this generation do you know can sing as well as them? Just name one person off the top of your head. You know what? That was that was actually my follow-up question. What was the last mm-hmm. album that you heard from this generation that it made you feel good from an R&B standpoint? I'd like, bro... I feel like the last great R&B album I heard was um, Alina Baraz. Her, uh, I, the, I think it's called, what's that album called? A Color of You. I think that's what it's called. Let me let me double check because I don't want to get the, the name wrong. You know, it's funny. I was going to say Solange to see yeah. the table. Yeah, The Color of You. And you know Solange too. Solange had a fucking amazing album. You you know Ray and I, we blast that album every chance we get because the fucking album is amazing. But yeah, yeah. Alina Baraz, The Color of You is... And and the fact... And you want to know what's even funny? Alina Baraz not even black. You know what I'm saying? Because R&B is a black fucking genre. It's a black ass genre. And the fact that I'm getting R&B vibes from a woman who's not black, what the fuck is going on? You know what I'm saying? But 
that's not that's not me trying to discredit the genre because if you look R and B, uh, underground R and B is alive and kicking. If you want the true R and B, just go to SoundCloud, go to some of them underground artists. Mm-hmm. They'll give you the fix that you need. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I want to shout one out real quick. Fucking Che Ekru, that's his the name. That motherfucker is dope. He makes dope ass music. And he's an R&B artist. He makes dope ass songs, and you know I'm happy. He came that up, up on my playlist too. Yeah, like bro, like, nah, he's good as fuck. He's good as fuck. You so, put me on him, actually. You did put yeah. me on him. Like bro, I will always put on people to to that dude because like I feel like he's one of the more authentic R&B people. You also want to know who I think is also authentic? Her. I think her is also a really, really, really good R&B artist that still has that essence that we're looking for. You know what I'm saying? And also, I want to shout out my girl Thames, straight from Nigeria. That's my bait. Like, she also has that R&B essence. And this is a woman from fucking, like, Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love seeing my people. You know, even though I'm a Ghanaian, I love seeing my people, you know, elevate the art. You feel what I'm saying? Like, this is not just Afrobeats. Like, she will sing you an R&B ballad and make you fucking melt in your motherfucking seat. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like the essence of R&B is still out there. You know, it's still there, but when it comes to the mainstream, it's all about toxicity. It's all about, you know, this wishy-washiness. Like, it's not, it don't have that essence that uh, R&B is known for. You know what I'm saying? Like when you hear a Sade song and you sing it along to it, you feel the motherfucking lyrics. Like, see, like when you sing a Sade song, you feel that shit. You know what I'm saying? When you sing a song by uh, uh, Anita Baker, you feel that shit. You know what I'm saying? And like a lot of that is lost now because yeah. niggas just want to make music about the type the, about the shit that people are going through now. And you know we in the we in the generation of the game goofy. So all you're gonna hear about is <laughs> niggas ain't shit, bitches ain't shit. I'm horny, but I ain't got nobody. Or you know, oh shit, I need to have some liquor before I make some. I make before I make love to this woman. Like, bro, what happened to like the the romance? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, bro, they, bro, they used to be niggas that used to make R and B albums to beg. What's that song called, Bray? We cry together. Like, <laughs> yeah, we cried together by the OJs. <laughs> I have never in my life heard a song like that. And let me tell you something like, bro, that used to be a time niggas used to beg, you know what I'm saying? Because they actually used to love women back in the day. So, you know, if the woman wasn't cooperating, nigga, they getting on that song and they hitting harmonies no one can hit. You feel what I'm saying? You don't get that shit now. Well, what what do you get now? Shawty, make that ass clap. You don't need no applause. High fashion, like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and you know, I'm not like I'm not trying to talk shit, but I'm trying to make a point that there's an essence to the music. You feel what I'm saying? Like when you hear certain albums, when you hear certain artists, there's an essence there. There's something there that makes you feel that shit in your soul. It's like Bob Marley said: when music hit you, you feel no pain. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like. Again, the essence is there if you look underground, but you know, if you're listening to the big three of R and B, bruh, they consider Drake an R and B artist. That's all I needed to know. That that's it for me. That right there in itself <laughs> proves my point. That Drake. Or, yeah, Drake. Like Drake. so I think Diddy, yeah, like so just to end, I do think Diddy has a point when he says that, but I also will say that it's not dead, dead. It's just it went underground. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. Now I I know why the video disappeared because the fucking uploaded it. Fucking took it down. I don't know why, but I did find another video that is quick because other every other ones was like forty five or thirteen minutes. I found one that was like two minutes long or some shit like that, and I ain't want to go through that. You're watching all urban central. So this oh, one, oh, this one, what you brought us into the world goes, goes right into the it. Best singer. Singer. That's, true. That's, that's true. true. that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Nice being real, real political. On B is dead as of right now. The on B that 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 I made my babies too. 
that all, that I mean, all, all be gotta all be judged gotta to be a certain thing. thing. It's, it's a feeling, no doggy. It's a feeling. Okay, it's a feeling. okay but look, okay. but no, why? No, 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 Ray, no, you're no, no, no. You're right. You're right. You gotta be able to sing. You gotta be able to sing for R and B. Then you gotta tell the truth. R and B is not a hustle. You know what I'm saying? This shit is about feeling your vulnerability. You gotta make a dick hard or a woman's vagina wet. You gotta okay. make a child. You and gotta cry. You gotta be able to get your girl back. I wanna hear all this bullshit. I done heard everything <laughs> about everything. You know what it is? It's a lack of vulnerability. It's our fault for accepting anything less for anybody getting on a mic. If you for anybody getting on a mic, if you was at church and you when you got on a mic and your ass couldn't sing and you need an auto tune, they be telling you, they be trying to baptize you. They be like, the devil is a liar. Yes, they you know would. Yes, would. Yes, they would. Everything shouldn't call ain't, ain't no old versus young. Ain't no, it's just we talking about singing. We oh, talking no. about RB singing. And I feel there is there was a death of RB singing, and I'm a part of bringing that shit back. And everybody that's out there that that's on some that want to feel some emotions, because I ain't feeling no emotions, B. Okay, that's what I said. I, that's what I said. I said. I said the messages on the beat. I said, take the beat out. I said, you you are absolutely right. I said, I don't know about the messages, and it's not coming with that feeling. But I was talking from a producer standpoint. I wasn't talking from the artist. Dude, it ain't, it ain't give you no emotion. That's not R and B. That's something else. Mm. So look, it's this girl named Susan Carroll. I feel like she really sings. She right. she 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 gives me that feeling. She All ain't right. no. She ain't no. She ain't no. Big, big person, but when I go on a page, she give me that feeling. Uh, it's these twins that give me that feeling. I forgot their names. It's just people that I say that give me that feeling, and I'm like, yo, this, where's the avenue where we can R &B get that? don't sound too alive, nigga. You don't no, even know nobody's don't. name. R B Pup, every, yo, I'm, I'm, I let everybody. Am I, am I still echoing, or is that? Am I coming in? Am right. I coming in? Yeah, yeah, you're coming yeah. in. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Now, now, father already spoke. Um, anybody else want to spoke? Obviously, um, uh, that was the video that I was trying to fucking show you. Thank God I saw another one. Also, thank you, Naja, for trying to send me a link. But uh, anybody else want to go? Um. What? Oh, damn. <laughs> go ahead. Are Uh, Crystal, you want to go? All right. So when it comes to R and B, um, I agree with them. It's it's dead. Um, I'm probably gonna say this wrong, but does anybody know Sanabo Say? Mm, no. All right. I'll just. Anyway, just know that I I totally agree with them. I don't know. What new R and B artists can really capture what R and B was back then? Because most of the R and B songs that I hear is a, like a sample from what we used to play in the '90s and the early 2000s. So I don't know. Everybody's always using the beats from the past, and then they're mixing it up and putting their their voice on it. But it's it doesn't capture that same. R and B feel. It is it is much more than just beats. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. Uh D if you you had Oh yeah. Um I don't know. This was a long time ago. I think I had direct TV at the time and I had like the full package. And uh there was this channel and it all it, it was like a little block late at night. And it was called Subterranean. And they play the they played modern um R and B, but it was like you never heard of these people. You know? And I wonder if that still exists. Subterranean. That show. I don't know if anybody's ever peeped that channel before. I think it was was it called One or something? It wasn't on a music channel. But yeah, and they used to play and I, I was like, why isn't this mainstream? I remember it wasn't that it wasn't too long ago. It was like 20 me 
what, 2012? And even at that point, music wasn't, uh, R&B wasn't, you know. So I remember that channel. I'm like, this ain't fair, yo. This shit sounds good. What's going on? I don't even know these people. Like, who are they? Why are they not being, like, once in a while you get a song that you've heard on the radio um, that's new, but the rest of them, damn, it was, yeah, but it was to what um thought I said earlier. Like, there are artists that you got to, these underground artists that are sounding phenomenal and you, we're just missing out because we're focused on, you know, who's winning the Grammys. I think uh, most of the, and this is just my theory, why a lot of people would say R&B is dead is because more people vibe to the beats than they do to the lyrics or what people say or rap or how people are rapping. Because even some people... They'll say uh, lyricism is dead in hip hop, so I think it's along the lines. But all right, to me, R and B has been dying for a minute. There's like a few where it's just like every once in a while, where it used to be like uh, we, especially like me growing up in the early 2000s. This is coming from like my generation. We had a shitload of R and like A Marie, Beyonce. Uh, Keisha Cole, Melanie Fiona, Jasmine Sullivan, and I know she won a Grammy for Hotels. Congratulations, congratulations! But you know, we had songs like that where it's like Erica Badu. You know, I get the list goes on. Jill Scott, the list goes on. I get like R and B artists where you could name on your hand. Now it's just like what are besides the R and B artists that you know that are on the ground. Which one can you really say? is like you could relate to because who who in your opinion who would you say is the hottest r&b artist right now would you say tory lanes but not that many people really fuck with tory lanes like that you want to know who i think is the biggest r&b artist right now oh. i would probably say her like if we talking about authentic R and B, like not no people that just dabble in R and B like Drake, but like authentic, mm-hmm. just pure R and B, I would say her. I would give you her, because mm-hmm. her music is fucking her- fun. I still play, I still blast her first album to this day. Her first album is unskippable to me. It's an unskippable album, and for an album to be unskippable, you you fucking got the sauce, my nigga. Her is dope. Her is dope as fuck. And um, Scissor. I, I will also say Scissor. But oh, I love Scissor. Out, she needs to put out that hit. Like hit different is like uh that you that was like my song for that year. That year it came out. That was my shit. And I fucking love Scissor. Bro, and I love her first. I album love Scissor. Uh, I love Scissor. Was it Scissor. Control? Yes, I love, I love Scissor. It. Bruh. And um, I can tell you, like, as someone that does review music, there's a couple of artists that I think is really cool too. Um, Alina Barras, like you done said, she was cool. I thought her album, the album was cool. Um, I know Tiana Taylor, she don't really do music no more, so I can't throw her out there. But when she did, I liked her shit. Uh, Van Jess, I, don't, I heard of Van Jess, but I thought Van Jess is good. Um, what was it? Uh, what was his name? Uh, Gideon, I think Gideon. Me, yeah, I heard Gideon is really dope. Yeah, Gideon is really, really, really dope. But they don't really get the name. They don't really get the recognition, with the exception of her. I don't think they don't really get the recognition that I feel like they deserve. Uh, like I said, the last and even though some of the albums that came out was cool, like I said, Control was cool. Uh, Van Jess's homegrown. I really like that uh, R&B album. They reminded me of Jeanne of this generation. They're dope. But like I said, the last album that I feel like it really moved me R&B wise was A Seat at the Table by Solange. Alina Baran's album was cool too, The Colors of You. That was also cool. But even before that, Trigger by <laughs> Trigger by Trey Songs. I fucking love that album. I love that album too. (laughs) Yeah, I fucking love Trigger. And that came out in like what, 20. 2015? 2015. That's how long. And then like Seat at the Table was like a year after that. So that's like, so you mean to tell me the last 
album that I feel like that really moved me like that was came out in 2016, and that's like six years ago. Facts. That's saying something. That's saying. Uh, um, don't get me like I said. Her is dope. But I really, really hear songs from Dope. Songs from her that Dope. I never really listened to a whole album, even though I should. I'm pretty sure I'm missing out on a lot of shit because that girl could write her ass off. Um, also, I also feel like Diddy is saying this to light the fire under some R&B artists because, like I said, it's a generation that, you know, us black people really adore, especially, like, when I know me growing up, I was... And you know the shots, the Patty Labelle's, the uh, Diana Ross's Supremes and shit. I was hearing Mary J. Blige growing up and all that other stuff, like songs that my parents would listen. To. They uh, they was like, "Oh, what you know about this young blood?" Like songs you would hear the uh, uh, the cookouts, and it's just like, "Oh, what you know about this young blood?" You know the, those type of tracks. You don't re- like you don't really song that I feel like I would play around my kids that you know they would they would listen to it it's just like oh my parents listen to that usually we're listening to the most common things hell it's even now that some of the songs that we grow up are the samples now and some of them they're in drill music <laughs> like uh I don't know if you heard this like a drill version of you don't know my name which the beat is dope, but um, is but at the same time, that's for drill music, and drill music is really aggressive. It's like, do I really want to hear "You Don't Know My Name" in an aggressive type? No, it's just like when you hear "You Don't Know My Name," Alicia Keys, and I can't believe I, I didn't even mention her name. I love Alicia Keys, but anyway, like she when she was in her when she was in her a days, like she was. Number two to Beyonce. It was Beyonce and Alicia Keys. She that's fixed how, you. That's how you know her. She fixed <laughs> <laughs> She fixed you. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, the other thing is this generation is more, they're more into beats. Like, what's, everybody listens to lo-fi hip-hop. It's not wrong with lo-fi hip-hop. Lo-fi hip-hop is dope. But I feel like a lot of people listen to that more then they will listen to some R and B shit. Yeah. They'll just listen to instrumentals in the background. Then there's an album. So I feel like this generation they're more attracted to that or Kid Cudi humming because um, <laughs> people like Kid Cudi when he hums. So, <laughs> so you so you also got that. Um, I think R and B can make a comeback, but it got to be you know, finally. I know. Strike a chord. That's like strike a chord in them. Like how H-Town knocking the boots. The first thing you hear is a dude, he's just It's like, it's gotta be one of those songs. Oh, you know you know a song where they just blow? You talk about songs where they just bruh, knocking the boots? I I swear, that's the best (laughs) intro. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you know what, Ray? You know what, Ray? Uh, you missed one song. Yeah. You didn't miss one song. Fucking Mark Henry's theme yeah. song. You know you gotta play Mark Henry. It's sexual, baby. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh man, you know who I also forgot? Maxwell. Maxwell was great at doing that. Just like before he said, a little bit. From a fortune to what? don't have a wonder to this woman's worth. That's all he did. He he let you know he about to sing your draws off. Before he even started singing, before he started his lyrics and shit, the draws was already off. It was just... Y'all remember meeting in my bedroom? There's a meeting <laughs> in my bedroom. Yo. 
They just it's keep that problem. going, yo. Nigga, high we're pitch, gonna, high we're, pitch, high pitch. We're gonna be going. We're gonna be going all fucking <laughs> night because there's so many. Na- there are so many people that will sing your fucking draws off, like mm. literally, literally. They gotta make that one hit that is gonna make people say, "That's that. Sh- that's the one." That's it right there. And and the and the best part is you you know, like you just know. It like it don't even have to be explained to you or nothing like that. Like once you hear that one song or once you hear that one voice, it's automatic. Okay, we're gonna get to our final thoughts and we're gonna start with D Wolf. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll be quick. Um, when seconds count, police are minutes away. That's my final thoughts. Damn, you I, was not lying. Nigga, I felt that shit. <laughs> I felt that. Uh, Crystal was on you. All right. So I'll try to make mine short. Um, I just want to talk about relationships on uh, the fact that when they when it's ended, um, it's quite exhausting. If anyone's in a relationship and they broke up, whatever. If you're going to talk about what happened, <laughs> what happened after y'all broke up, please do not remember only half fucking truths. To justify your fuckery, especially if the one person in a relationship gave more um, opportunities to get back than the other. Like, it's so many times I hear stories about people breaking up and then my friends would be like, oh, yeah, he said this, this and that. He want to remember it all wrong. And I'm like, really? So he don't remember, you know, having another bitch say she loves him while y'all was in a whole relationship. And now when you want to move on he's acting like he has amnesia, like he was in MIB and he got the pen and shit. Like, nigga, go somewhere. So at the end of the day, like, just be truthful. And it doesn't even have to be about relationships. It's just anything at all. People need to stop this manipulation of justifying their actions when another person says enough is enough and they don't and they don't want to play these games. They want to put up boundaries. Boundaries are there to prevent narcissists and psychopaths and sociopaths. It is what it is. Just people need to be more truthful and stop bringing up topics that they can't handle the truth and then want to play the blame game. It's annoying. I see a lot of people do it and you know, it is what it is. I don't see it going anywhere, but I'm just calling it out for what it is. Like it needs to stop. If you know you broke up with somebody and they decide to be friends with you, take it for what it is. Don't bring up and hash out old shit that you know you can't fix. You're looking for a justification in in your fuckery and it's not happening. Then don't be friends with them. That's all I got to say. Love it. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Uh, Fada's on you. I'm going to end this with a quote uh, from one of my favorite movies of all time, Ghost in the Shell. Your desire to remain as you are is what ultimately limits you. God damn. <laughs> crushed it tonight, yo. Damn. Uh, that, uh, that's it, Father? Yes, sir. Shout out to my favorite movie of all time. Also one of the greatest intros, too. I love that. That intro is fire. Um, there was a picture that I I, I saw. I laughed at, but all, uh, all in all, I do kind of disagree with. It's a picture of um, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, and I guess Beyonce. And it's like, don't feel like training your daughters. Don't worry. I will. So I guess what the the picture was trying to emulate that um, the whole city girl culture or, you know, the whole culture that a lot of 
uh, people are not uh, very too fond of. Because usually when, you know, people think of this city girl culture or this whole culture or this fluid out culture, you know, most people, they'll, they'll, they will throw names like Cardi. I heard Beyonce and then I've heard Beyonce's name in it a couple of times. And, you know, mostly the city girls because, you know, most of the music. Now, as, you know, as a person that I've always said, you know, it, you know, I always defend gangster rap because it's the product of the environment. I also have to, def- even though I don't want to, I had to defend this because you really can't blame those, the female rappers or the entertainers. For- They're entertainers. All right. Their job is to entertain, which is, you know, I understand there are plenty of other ways to entertain people, but, you know, if that's the way they want to entertain, that's the way they're going to entertain. Your kids do not have to listen to that. Nor your kids should be listening to that. Most of these people that you know that have families in this business, they don't, they don't let their kid listen to their music because they know their kids are for adults. If, <coughs> excuse me, if Cardi B or Eminem could tell you, I don't listen to, I don't let my kids listen to my stuff. Why are you letting your kids listen to that? So, Mm -hmm. excuse me. So, um, it's just, I feel like um, if you feel like your daughter is a hoe, that's something that you really need to look back at. Is that you can't be, it starts at the home or, you know, some things that, you know, they may like. So, especially if you're like a father, uh, if you know how fathers can sometimes spoil their kids. So, if you know the father spoiled the kids, chances are the girl is going to be spoiled. I've seen it a lot of times. <coughs> My God! <laughs> also, also, <laughs> also, um, there's a there's another there was another story I seen where uh seventy uh fifty one year old mother was visiting her son's grave. And the seventeen-year-old boy killed uh, killed the mother, and that was like a real sad story. Um, you got to be some type of evil to kill someone's ops's mother. That they're like they not even in the game or something like that. Like the kid is already dead. You didn't have to kill the mother too. Um, <coughs> excuse me. There's a special place in hell for you for the kid that did that, but. Also, there's a. I keep saying this. This like so much evil in the world, it's, and most of it, <laughs> it comes from the youth. We really need to get a hold of these youth to make them feel like they're somebody. I say this every week, but each and every time I hear these stories, it's like it, I feel like it needs to be reiterated no more. We got to put hope into these youth to know that they are somebody that they don't have to do this shit, or they have to. Uh, they don't have to. Do this life of crime or some shit like that. So, I hope you know we can turn this around because there is no reason for that shit to happen. Yeah. Uh, you was gonna say something, Crystal? You look like you was gonna say something. I was. I was just shocked at the story that you just mentioned. That's all. With the all mom right. and all that. That's it. Oh, all right. As a rest in, rest in peace to that mom. Rest in peace to that mother because I would be like that's some devastating shit that you know your your son was you know hit in the line of gunfire, and then like you had to experience that same faith and like back then I look maybe it's a TV but you know even then like there was morals even in you know <laughs> this even in. This game made this some moral shit. Like you don't, most people don't even like put their hand on people that's not in the game and some shit like that. Like you don't kill the innocent and some shit like that. Like there's there's got to be some type of morals and some shit like that. A, I don't like seeing stories like that. But um, that's all I have to say. I would like to thank the panel for jumping on the podcast once again. I like to thank for y'all listening to hear us talk our shit again. This is you know what. Let me just say podcast. And we sign it out. Peace. Cheers.